I have goosebumps on my entire body right now. When people talk about, oh, I just got stung and they don't scream, I don't see, I don't see how they do it. Hello everyone and welcome back to the channel. As I was beginning to edit this video, I realized that the cars were a little too loud in the background. So I'm just gonna do a voiceover. So in today's video, I thought that I would bring you guys along while I got a ton of garden maintenance done. The cut flower gardens, the veggie gardens, the tomato beds, containers, I had so many things just becoming a weedy mess, needing deadheaded, needing tied up, and things like that. Today was one of those days that my husband took the kids out for me, so I was just going out and getting as much things done as I could. I also had an order for a couple bouquets, so I got those flowers harvested and then worked on, like I said, deadheading and a few other things. My goal with today's video was to try to give you guys maybe some motivation to get your gardens under control if need be now that it's getting closer to fall maybe you just need to pull a bunch of things out and start seeding things for fall or maybe it's a saturday and you just want to sit back and drink a cup of coffee or some tea and enjoy seeing me do all the work now since this video did end up getting filmed over a period of three days i ended up breaking it up into two parts so that it wasn't super super long so make sure you check out both of these videos I'm also going to be showing you guys lots of beautiful things like flowers, giving you some tips on how to harvest a couple things and stuff like that. So go ahead and grab a drink, a snack, go ahead and sit down and let's get started. Just came over here to move the hose because my soaker hoses uh, need replaced in this bed. So I have to water this bed by hand and I just happened to look over and see this beautiful dahlia that I have to show you. But let me turn the camera around. So I wanted to show you this gorgeous, ooh, what was that? Something, something just about fell into my hand, but it fell on the ground. Not sure what it was, but I wanted to show you this gorgeous dahlia for two reasons. Number one, because it's beautiful, but also, do you guys see that? There we go, much better. So, yeah, it looks like blood is on this dahlia, and so that's really weird. I don't know where that could have came from besides from a bird or another insect because, I mean, no one, no one, no person is going to be over here. And a bug just crawled right into it. But yeah, isn't this thing gorgeous? Oh my goodness, I'm so in love with these dahlias. And I love this structure of dahlia. We have another one beginning to open up on the other side of the garden. Now let's go move this hose and let me show you the lisianthus that we still have left in the garden. So to save time, instead of me standing here for really long periods of time, I either set up the sprinkler or I do uh, the setting on the hose where it's kind of a fan shape and I just lay it on the ground and I let it water things this way. I used to be really concerned about not letting the water hit the foliage because that can promote diseases. I've come to realize after years of not letting the water hit the foliage and still dealing with those diseases that it's not worth my time because of how humid we are. So there's no sense in me spending all that extra time coming over here and holding the hose, you know, down below the plant canopy when I can let it sit here and I can go get some other things done in, in the garden. What I'll do is I'll just move it every few feet. I'll do the same thing on the other side and then I will stand and hold the hose to do the things in the middle if it doesn't reach doing it this way. Now here is my little Lisianthus patch. You can see that I have harvested almost all of the Lisianthus, but there are still a few things in here that I am letting go to seed. I have quite a few that I've been keeping an eye on that seem to be 
forming little pods of seeds. So hopefully we can get lots of seeds out of these guys this year. And then something else that I didn't even notice until I came over here to do this video is that they are sending up secondary blooms. These were all cut down, all the way down, except for these few that I left that are really tall. So any of the ones that you see that are shorter, like all of these, are secondary stems that are growing. So that's awesome to know that, you know, if I have the space to just leave them, that they'll send up another succession of blooms because I've never heard anyone say that about Lysianthus. You know, you usually have, you know, each plant will send up, you know, three or four stems and then they're done with. Most of them will anyways, but I've never, I've never heard anyone say anything about, you know, them sending up a, another succession after being, you know, harvested the first time. I was just about to deadhead some of these gladiolus and look what I found. not spraying chemicals on my garden and if i absolutely feel like i need to because of an infestation only using organic has been such a game changer i have been having so many bugs and butterflies and insects and you know frogs and lizards and just so many things that i've never seen This one was a beautiful color. That's weird. See that? It's missing one of its I don't know what the word for that is, florets. It's just empty. I only got a few of these oranges in this mix. Or orange, really. I only got a few of these yellows. I only got a few of these yellows in this mix. So we have all of the glads deadheaded. There were only two that still looked fairly good. The rest will go in the compost. And I just wanted to show you really quickly what this is looking like. And as you can see here, I've also, ha I've also got a dahlia growing in behind the glads. I was hoping that the glads would be done with and then the dahlias could take over on each side. Uh, but the glads kind of shaded out the dahlia on this side a little bit too much, I think. It's pretty leggy. I don't know. I might pinch it back and see what it does. Well, I was getting ready to harvest Solosha, but do you see all of those wasps? I count at least eight, not counting the bees. We'll come back to you guys. All right, so it is the next day. I'm out here early this morning and we are going to harvest some flowers. This is just a little wagon that I use to carry things down here because although it's not an extremely far walk, um, it is a lot of trips if I'm carrying everything by hand. 
and then this is a little tool belt that I got that honestly I don't usually wear because it's just so stiff I'm gonna try to wash it a couple times and see if that helps now usually I would not have all of these really old very blown out blooms which if you don't know much about cut flowers you want to harvest zinnias when they are fully developed but right before their prime as soon as their stem begins to stiffen up you want to harvest them that way they're at their prime for your customer to enjoy them the longest in the vase and so that they keep on producing you want to keep all of these uh, deadheaded basically if you're not going to cut them and put them in a bouquet you want to cut them and toss them in the compost uh, because once they're fully mature they start producing seeds and that takes a lot of energy so if you pull out some of those lower petals you'll see that there are lots of seeds in there and that is going to cause your plant to focus on that instead of uh, producing more blooms what I usually do is I bring a bucket out here for things like this and then I bring a bucket out with water for the ones that I'm going to keep. So as you can see there are two stems right here that would eventually become one of these. But I go ahead and I sacrifice these two because if I were to cut it right here I could probably use that in a bouquet but after several months of doing that, I've realized that they're so much more difficult to work with when I cut them that short and try to, you know, to save the, the next blooms. It's easier when they're in the bucket when they're very tall because you don't have them falling down in the bucket. And it's just easier when you're building the bouquet to have a lot longer stem and then to cut it down to the size you need. And especially in my case, when I don't have a huge, you know, customer base, I don't need all of these. So why not make my job a lot easier, especially whenever it takes me a really long time to build the bouquets as it is. Why not try to make my life a little bit easier? But anyways, we need to get this guy into some water as quickly as possible. You do not want to keep them, uh, you know, out here in the heat. Uh, they're going to lose moisture, therefore not last as long in the vase. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to look for where the stem is skinnier and darker and stiffer. Uh, you shouldn't cut your zinnias until they are very stiff at the neck anyways. Um, but sometimes they're a little hollow more towards the top. So I'm going to grab it where it's very thick. I'm going to pinch it and then I'm just going to do this all the way down until I have stripped all of the leaves off and then I will throw these in my bucket. Then I'm going to place them in water. The rest of these are either too far gone or they are very, uh, they have very crooked stems which is another benefit of going ahead and sacrificing those side shoots near the top of this plant because as you can see the netting the hordanova netting is very low to the ground i don't have any up here so these are flopping over but then the sun is causing them to grow up and then leaving me with these crooked stems so that's another reason i've realized that it's better to just sacrifice them I'm going to have many more zinnias within a few days, so it's not a problem. Another benefit to harvesting these and deadheading these before they are very mature is once the seeds begin to develop, you're going to have a lot of birds coming in after the seeds. I don't mind sharing a little with the birds, but I find that it's better for me to grow things like sunflowers uh, and let those go to seed in a different area of the garden and let those, you know, have at it. Uh, and then to keep these free of seeds and keep them out of this area of the garden so that they're not, you know, landing on branches and breaking flowers that I might really want to keep. 
and I just noticed there is a what I believe is a cutworm see that guy in there you guys see that my son and I are actually raising some monarch and swallowtail caterpillars right now and we also grabbed one of these guys, but then I learned that it's actually a cutworm, I believe anyways. I'm not totally positive, but from my research, I believe it is a cutworm and they are no good. And there is no shortage of them, so we are not going to keep that guy. Look at the size of this guy though. These are the queen limes, which do usually get a little larger than this, but and these red ones are the Will Rogers variety. Also, when you harvest zinnias, you want to make sure and remove all of these lower leaves because leaves will begin to disintegrate in the water and then they will cause bacteria and clog the stems up to where they're not able to take in water and they will not last as long in the vase. If you know what causes this kind of damage, I would love if you would let me know in the comments. I've been seeing this a lot. It almost looks like something was sprayed on the flowers and then the sun kind of like bleached it. But then it also looks like a little bug has just chewed the petals. And I don't spray in my garden, so I know that's not any kind of spray from me. Look at this guy. It's really red in the top layer. And then these lower leaves or lower petals are orange. That would be beautiful if it wasn't missing half of its petals. And this one is Benary's Giant Salmon, I believe. These cucamelons are taking over the unicorns. These cucamelons are so vigorous. So are the morning glory. Probably not two of the best options to put on one cattle panel trellis. This has just grown insane in the last couple days. My amaranth has began to go out of control. There it is again, you guys. There's two of them, those beautiful yellow and black birds. And you know, that's proof right there why you don't want to let a bunch of flowers, you know, go too far past their prime to where they start forming seeds because then you will have a bunch of birds landing on them and, you know, tearing up your cut flower. Is this gorgeous or is this gorgeous? All right, so I think that's enough. So I'm going to take me a coffee break and get some itching cream because I'm getting eaten up by mosquitoes. Between now and when I filmed the intro of this video, I've got an order for two bouquets. So I am going to harvest some more zinnias and then I'm also going to harvest some of these sunflowers. Look at this monster. 
She is way past her prime, but she is huge. All right, I have me a couple sunflowers. I've got a lot of zinnias. I got some uh, filler and foliage already. So I think I'm gonna go ahead and let these, take these in the house, let them condition, so that while I am finishing my chores, uh, when I'm done, then I can go make the bouquets. Let's see about harvesting some basil. Look at this goodness. Oh, and it smells so good. I wish I was filming. When people talk about, oh, I just got stung and they don't scream. I don't see, I don't see how they do it. I have goosebumps on my entire body right now. I have not gotten stung since I was like probably eight years old. I was over here trying to cut back some of these weeds. I was trying to remove the Hordenova netting. I'm over here getting ate up by mosquitoes. And I thought that I got stuck by one of those spiky amaranth weeds. Ugh. Three, three mosquitoes were just on my leg. I thought it was one of those spiky amaranth weeds and it started to hurt a little bit worse and I went to look at it and the bee was still on me and I used my snips to just like smack it off, which probably didn't help, but I'm done. It's almost eight o'clock. I think my husband's about to go crazy from watching the kids all day. So I'm gonna end this video here. Hopefully you got to see a lot of what I got done today and maybe it gave you a little bit of motivation or inspiration, but I am done. <laughs> After that, I am going in, I'm taking a shower and I'm just, I'm done for the day.